Hello my friends and welcome to this walkthrough of the text guide for the Vegas Sun and Down tournament with me Golf Clash Tommy and Mr. RJ TV. Welcome RJ, how are you doing today? I'm doing very good, how are you? Yeah, I'm fine. It's uh, kind of late now actually. I wish I wouldn't be needed to go back to work tomorrow, but uh, yeah, money needs to get in. You know, so it's uh, <laughs> yeah. So, my friends, we're going to go through the text, guys. We're going to go through hole one to hole nine. I'm going to try to cover as much as possible as usual. And when it comes to uh, all the questions that you might have, please speak up in the comment section below. And anyone, uh, any one of us will be able to answer you. Uh, as fast as possible and before we start do not forget to hit that subscribe button here on the channel We are running towards 16,000 people, which is absolutely amazing if you do want to have a training session with me uh, Or maybe have a specific guide or something like that for something else uh, in the game of golf clash check out patreon.com slash golf clash Tommy so Shut up and sit down. <laughs> Sorry <laughs> oh my god okay we off we are we are off to a great start so we're going to start off with hole number one and we are both sitting down so i will i will ask you rj how do we play hole number one uh all right sorry about that guys <laughs> dogs um so you know in the past i'm gonna tell you what i do in the past in the past i follow the white line um, the trees are in play now though. So if you do come up a little bit short, you can't do that typical rough bump that a lot of people like to do. I actually love that shot because, you know, a lot of times it might trickle into the hole, but make sure you put that full top spin on, um, you know, the big topper might even be a good option for us down there in rookie, uh, get up, get as high as you can up where that white line is. I'd go a little, if you can go even a little higher than where that square is extra mile, big topper, whatever and then just cut right on over. Or you could do what Tommy did for me with some training and learn to take that black line with the big topper and a berserker and potentially get yourself the eagle. That was funny. I watched it myself where I was uh, having a big smile on my face uh, when you pulled that shot off. It was absolutely Not a big as mine. <laughs> <laughs> so I can just... Um, uh, I just want to make that clear as well. It says in the text guide, the last sentence of the white line said, if you go short on the fairway, you can use the rough by the green as the trees are not in play. And that is wrong because they have changed this hole now. The trees are in play, so you can't play it in that way. And we both, of course, want to be very, very clear with that. So you're not pull, uh, getting up to first tee and play uh, play that shot for your second shot and then you get stuck by the trees that is not something we do want when it comes to the higher levels or the higher divisions you uh, will hopefully get the opportunity to go directly to the green according to the black line and that uh, that need you to have like at least six seven bars of top spin to be able to bounce over the bunker and on to the green. It's going to be a tough one. Many of the people will be stuck uh, in the bunker or in the rough uh, by just there after the water. Uh, and if you do feel not so, co if you don't feel confident about going that way, even though you get the win for it, then you can play safe according to the white line and ju and just and just, but have a short iron to the pin. This is by all means an eagle <coughs> opportunity. That is uh, that is good for you, and you need to play it in a way that you act actually give yourself the easiest opportunity for the eagle. Um, when it comes to the ball here, I would say like again, if you're using uh, a big topper playing in rookie or in pro, then you should go with a berserker. Otherwise, you can actually go with a regular kingmaker or a titan, depending on how long you need to reach and maybe in masses as well we kind of need to pull off a berserker uh, especially if we do get some sidewind or maybe slight tailwind so yes hole number two a part three one of the new holes and we haven't really said we haven't said that right we it's like five new holes in the tournament uh, and uh, so it's uh, we you're going to see some new holes here so i'm just going to drop the ball over to you rj it's like hole number two new hole how can we play this one? You know, I got really lucky. The first time I played this hole, I had no idea what to do. I was terrified. 
and you know, I I basically I just took the white line, and I you know on the second bounce with the backbone, I did like a, a kind of like a rough bump with that second bounce, um, and in doing so, it trickled off of the rough and very close to the hole. So. I'm, that's what I'm recommending. I don't know, you know, correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe that was a very dangerous shot and I got lucky, but that's what works for me. A lot of these greens are so teeny tiny and the ones that aren't seem to have slopes in the back that like to take you into the rough or the sand. So that's my favorite shot for this one. It, it's, uh, I can just build on that, would say this is a very, very tough part three. And it's like, uh, when it comes to tough part threes, you kind of need to decide for yourself are you going to play it for the hole in one or are you going to play it for the birdie? It's like you don't want to find yourself in the rough or into the bunker because you are going with such a close line. It's There are, in my opinion, three ways to play this hole and the third way is not applied on on the screen this time, but the first, like when it comes to the black line, and then you can bounce, actually rely that you get three bounces to the green which means that you need to bounce it on the first fairway then over to the second fairway down into the rough and roll down to the green and then you need to be a little bit lucky with the bounces and uh, then you can go according to the white line go with just one single bounce onto the green or you can actually use the rough the first part uh, not part piece of rough uh, with three to four bars of topspin and rolling into the rough out on the uh, on the fairway to roll down into the rough onto the green you can just hear how hard th these type of shots are, but to have la just a little bit of an understanding on how these holes can be played will help you tremendously to not just like pull yourself into the bunker or into the rough. The important part here, again, don't see this as a hole that you need to make and hole in one on. See it as a hole that you will be happy with a birdie and then go through to, ne to the next hole. So, um... And to also apply something with hole number two, it's played downhill, which means that, for an example, if you're using your sniper, and as the sniper R 100% accurate is um, one ring per, mi per mile per hour, uh, which means that if you're using five rings, then you should be going with at least one ring extra, in my opinion. Hole number three, we go over to one of the old holes that has been changed a little bit. So, uh, and I want, again, drop over to you, RJ. How do we play this one? I'm taking the black line. I'm going with the uh, extra mile, uh, much like the other hole. Um, I'm, I'm taking the extra mile and trying to drive that ball as far up as I can. I'm going to use a power ball, something with two or three power. So I know us rookies don't always get those power balls, but um, I don't think it's berserker worthy. But, you know, if you do have a Titan, uh, maybe a Katana, you know, because it has the two power full top spin, try to get up uh, past that little narrow way, uh, uh, fairway and, and just take the easy wood shot with your second shot to get you on the putting green or very close for a chip. Um you know, the white line is, is a safe way to it. Just it, it depends on, you know, what you like. For me personally, I feel like we're, we're really flying over a lot of that sand taking the black line as to where we're a lot closer with the white line personally. I will have to add directly that there have been some changes with this hole which uh, have been making the game makers to put a tree just basically we're just by the bunker there in the middle and some bushes as well and a tree that will be uh, some of the times in your uh, like ball guideline which means that you need to maybe apply some curl and stuff like that so have that in mind when you play it so you don't find yourself in a tricky situation the normal way I can just agree with you, RJ, as well, that like going with the black line is a normal way. The white line applies if you do have tailwind. Uh, then you can try to go over either stay on that fairway patch on, on the right, or you can try to bounce it a little bit further, put yourself up for a short iron or maybe a wedge to the pin. 
Sure, it's still going to be a hard one for the Albatross even though you have a Wedge or a Short Iron and try to at least give yourself a shot from the fairway to maybe bag that, uh, that Albatross. And this is a hole where I do suggest that you actually are using uh, a big dog, uh, Cataclysm or something like that, maybe a Guardian as well with some distance. If you do have a low level sniper, it's going to be tough for you to reach for the green, especially if you play yourself up short. So, then we do have hole number three, we go through to hole number four. Uh, also one of the old holes that has been made a little tweaks at least like a design update so uh, we take this one as we normally do how do we play this one man this might have the biggest green of all the holes that they have you got nice fairway on the left you got nice fairway on the right oh but wait a minute we got to use that tiny little <laughs> island to get there. <laughs> <laughs> True. For us rookies, I say yes. I say the backbone is the best way to go. I would use a navigator, especially if you don't know how to count rings, to knock down that wind to make sure you can land on that little teeny tiny uh, fairway. And what would I would say? Maybe two, maybe three backspin. Just let your ball guide, you know, figure out. Uh, definitely, I wouldn't go with top spin. Uh, the blue and white lines, personally, I think those might be for pro and above. Just my opinion. If you got the clubs and you're in rookie, go for it. But I, I think you're safe with a backbone or better. Do not leave your Saturn in on this hole. You're going to be using your Saturn a lot. And your Saturn, you'll have to put a power ball in or you'd have to overpower it, which is always dangerous. What do you think? That was a good ad, actually, to actually not use the Saturn. Mm -hmm. uh, to not find yourself like having to overpower your shot. It's like that that is not something we do want I remember when this hole got uh, Got like familiar to mm -hmm. me and that like every single one did play it by the island and Like that island is very tricky to find especially if the wind gets kicked up to like 8 10 15 miles per hour and that's why people then try to find other ways to play this hole. And that's why we do have the blue line and we do also have the white line. And as, um, as RJ said, it's mostly applied when it comes to pro experts or masters. Uh, because you play from the second tee and also have higher wind. While going by the white line, you use somewhere in between one and a half to two bars of topspin in the rough. Combined with max side spin of your ball. And you need to curl it a little bit to get it straight to the pin. If you do have a club, for an example, the Guardian playing from the second tee, or maybe you play in Masters, you maybe have the Rocket in a maxed uh, level, then you can go according to the blue line, go with max backspin, curl it in to the green, and especially if you do have headwind, it will stop really nice. And I remember actually that I was lucky enough to make an holy one in the tournament when we had this hole with the Rocket with full max backspin. So, um, have that in mind when you play. You don't have to go by the island if you don't want to. But again, the easiest way to get on hole in one is by the island. So, risk and reward are to decide, actually. But uh, it, it's not fun when it's not tough. So, we we'll go through to hole number five. And here you can see three lines. And it's one of the new holes as well. So, I'm asking you directly, RJ, how do we play this fun hole? Me personally, and my recommendation to all rookies is avoid the middle. It's not worth it. There's nothing there for you. <laughs> you could get lucky technically, but personally, uh, you can go with, uh, I, I would go with the right side. Uh, the right side just seems like the better approach. I, I remember in practice trying to go to the left side, and I didn't like the fairway that I had to deal with for my second shot. So really get the, get the little bit more difficult shot out of the way by taking the black line. Um, extra miles, some top spin. Make sure you don't go into the sand. Make sure you don't go into the rough. And, you know, then you have that straight line on your way to the fairway for your second shot where you could potentially sink yourself a, uh, a eagle shot or, you know, at least set yourself up with a nice putt or easy chip. Yes, I would say like the, I'm going to start it with this. If you're playing with from the second tee, if you do find yourself with wind seven miles per hour plus, and if you do have a berserker ball, you maybe have some of the new turbo balls or maybe a snow globe ball, then go for the green. 
and that may be uh, hard to uh, hard to understand when we do have a big big bunker in the middle just uh, by the green uh, the the thing that i mean with that is that you need to use first of all a club a driver with some distance you go with max curl on your driver and with the max top spin going into the rough just by the bunker rolling out onto the fairway just by the green and the thing is there is that the green sorry the fairway is uphill which means that the ball will basically stop and fall back down and uh, that will give you a wedge or maybe a pot for the pin but that only applies if we do have the wind in that type of uh, in that type type of strength otherwise i go as you said rj right side go by the black line uh, if i do have some really tough headwind then we will be having a hard time to go according to the black line then we have to go according to the white line try to go as far as possible but again that is a much harder approach and we need to have in mind here use clubs with backspin saturn thorn to actually give yourself even though you maybe go short with that tricky fairway and green give yourself the opportunity at least to get that one in for an eagle so we're going to go to hole number six now and this is it looks easier than it is and uh, it's going to be uh, interesting to go through this one so how do we play hole number six um yeah it, i mean it, it does look kind of like the big brother to the one you know to the hole before it uh, you can, in my opinion, you can go left or right. I got notes on both. If you go left, I would use uh, top topspin. Uh, I like your square placements. Basically, you're going to bounce at the first square, and then, uh, you know, it's going to, you know, in a perfect world, it'll roll up near the top of the fairway. And then, um, let's see here. Uh, I'm sorry, I lost my spot on my notes. Uh, you know, and then you have a shot on that teeny tiny little green. Or you could go the right way, which might be a little bit safer because I believe you could take the quarterback to go right, um, and that gives you a much longer ball guide. Uh, I would take a Titan or Katana if I'm going the left way and we have a favorable wind. If we're going the right way, I want to bring a Katana, but a Quasar will do if you don't have it. Right spin, right curl, you know, um, to come in just – where you where you need to be able to come in as you can see on the screen to that second box there and then this way it kind of makes your second shot a little bit easier because you have that fairway you could bounce on to get you to the green yeah. um i don't mess with the center <laughs> yeah it, it's a tough one uh, that that can only be said it's it's a very tough par five and don't blame yourself if you miss the eagle of course to be able to win the tournament we need to have an eagle uh, on at least this par 5 we're going to come to an even harder par 5 in the end but when it comes to both black uh, black line and white line i do think the rough bump is basically the best especially if we play from the second tee uh, the pin stands very very short on the green which means that if you go directly to the green that will only be for kind of like getting the safe eagle and that could actually be good at especially with some high wind and kind of go with a club with a lot of backspin to go straight at the green uh, straight at the green don't care about the pin just uh, putting it in there for an eagle but if you do want to have the albatross or at least go for it you need to go by the rough bump according to the black line then you go with uh, zero to one bar of backspin if you're having side wind or um or headwind if you're having tailwind you can go with one and a half bar of backspin as you're going come in uh, go, gonna come in with a different approach depending on the wind of course if you go according to the white line hang uh, have in mind that uh, don't use too much topspin on your driver as it's very tricky when the fairway slopes down to the left and wants you to be pushed out into the rough and that will make uh, you having a really really tough time to reach for the green in two you can bounce it on the fairway, uh, fairway island or something like that, uh, there by the green, according to the white line, onto the green, and to try to get the albatross. But still, again, it's a very, very tough one. And the wind, uh, wind in my opinion, do de uh, decide a lot on how we're going to play this one. So it's going to be a very interesting one. And this will definitely, in my opinion, be a hole that will 
be uh, tough uh, for people to make a cons uh, make and consistent uh, eagle. So we go through to hole number seven, another new hole, another tricky par three, another pin that stands short. But how can we get this hole in one? Tell me. <sighs> Everyone has their favorite. Some people feel safer going right. Some people feel safer going left. You're either way, you got about the same amount of sand on both sides. Go with what you feel, uh, you know, best on, or you know, whatever your uh, your guts telling you to go. I personally am going Saturn, Quasar, or Katana. Right spin, back spin, left side. <laughs> That was uh, that was a like a clean way to describe actually I like that and uh, that's again uh, for me I'm going to decide depending on the wind if I have wind left to right I'm going left if I have wind right to left I'm going right and the reason for that is that it's going to be needed to use some curl to be able to get close to get the hole in one if you are going to play according to the lines there on the screen. Uh, and the pin stands very short and you need to have a club with a lot of backspin uh, have in mind that if you're going to play with a titan or a kingmaker don't use the sniper if you're going to play according to the lines because then you will be in between clubs so then you need to use the guardian so you have to have more backspin uh, on your club uh, there is another way to play it and i would say that way to play it would be if you are very accurate by adjusting for the wind or that you have side wind and that is that you bounce it with max topspin in the bunker by the green or you're using the rough bump by the green as well again it's a very tricky part three and don't be sad if you make a birdie and don't be close to the hole in one and sometimes it actually can be and we have said that many times already sometimes it can be better to not just like try to push it too hard uh, and just take the safe route and get yourself a birdie and go through and try to get the eagle on hole number eight instead which is going to uh, much e to be much easier to make it to drop than on hole number seven um so we do have um here on hole number eight we do have a new hole as well and this is a hole where that i do really like and i want to ask you here rj how would you play hole number eight <sighs> well doing it live and in one take i guess we're going to run into some problems <laughs> <laughs> uh and, and this is the problem that i'm thinking we're running into the, my notes and the way that when i put together my notes doing this and my practice and everything else, I had really good luck taking that white line. I love that really long fairway. Um, it just seems like a super, super safe, easy way to go. Uh, you know, get up as, as close to the top there as you can to just make it a nice, even shot. The white line is perfect. Um, you know, you could use a quarterback, uh, you know, uh, with and, and trust your ball guide not to go into the rough. However, this is where the problem comes in. There's not going to be very low, or should I say high, scores. This isn't going to be another minus 30 type course. And I'm kind of thinking the black line is going to give you a better shot to get a leg up on the competition here. But I didn't take notes on the black line because I haven't perfected it yet. So... <laughs> Can you lend me a helping hand? Uh, absolutely. Uh, I have been trying out and been playing the according to the black line many times and also white line many times as I've been lucky to get this hole many times actually when I was recording for the guide. And it, we need to have a uh, driver first and foremost that do have some distance uh, by going uh, according to the black line. Don't use that way to go if you do have headwind. If you do have side wind, you will have to overpower your shot. And then you do need to have four bars of top spin. If you do have more than four bars of top spin, you can risk going into the rough on top. But again, we'd rather take a short rough iron than we take like from the bunker by going short. So, but four bars of top spin, you need to use max side spin. You need to use curl to the side as well to the left as you will be bounced onto the right. So if you don't use curl, 
the size pointer left will not be enough to land yourself onto the fairway platform there for the second yeah, second bounce or the second landing spot. And also, if we do play this one from the second tee, if you maybe have some good wind, I'm talking mostly expert here, as the wind will most likely be around 7, 8, 9, 10 with a kingmaker in expert. Then if you pull out a turbo ball, berserker ball, a snow globe ball, then you could be able to actually go for this green in one by reaching over to the, uh, the second fairway, bouncing over the bunker and have a little bit of luck to get that one directly to the green. The white line otherwise, it's a conservative line and it's a safe line and it's a good line as well. You have a straight shot for the pin with a mid, with a min distance uh, of the sniper. Uh, and it's like many people are going to play that route, especially if the second shot will allow you to have straight tailwind. Then that is a uh, that is an interesting way to actually play that hole as well. So again, I actually agree with you, RJ, with with a way of uh, like we will not have that many opportunities in this in this tournament, even though we get tailwind on every hole. So this could maybe be some some hole that you may take that extra risk to give yourself that an uh, easier chance to get that eagle. Because, again, if you want to win, you kind of need to find an eagle on one of the par fours, in my opinion. We're going to go to hole number 9, and this is a par 5.5 or par 6, <laughs> something like that. It's, uh, it's, yeah, it's the toughest par 5 in the game to make an eagle on, uh, that, that we all can uh, say directly. But I'm very interested to hear how you play this one. Are they especially now when they have changed the the fairway a little bit? Uh, yeah, when I first played this, I'm like, something's different. Something don't feel <laughs> right. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's it's quite apparent. And just as I say, the scores aren't going to be you know right around that minus thirty uh, mark. They throw this at us for hole nine and hole eighteen. Um, you know. It's, it's mm -hmm. not that it's so hard. You have plenty of fair way to deal with. Uh, you know, for, so from that standpoint, you're doing good. Obviously, as you see, there's only one line to take off of the tee, and that is the black line. Um, I would go with our extra miles rookies. Uh, you know, it's even, I'm kind of thinking if you have a really low level extra mile, but you were lucky enough to unlock the big topper, that might be an option as well. Um, I think I would go with a power ball here as well. Uh, because you want to make sure in the way that I would go anyway is I would then branch off to the white line. Um, I just feel that you have so much more control if you can get up to the top of the fairway, a little above the white box. You can make that easy jump to the uh, putting green. And I, to me, that's the way I've been playing it. And I've been having a lot of success. Um, if you're going to take the black line, I believe you'd want a... Uh, a wood that has a lot of backspin on it. Um, and, you know, not many of us rookies have guardians or such. So, yeah, it would be white line for me. And if you can get up high enough, you can bounce over the little sand river looking thing up by the putting green and, you know, and, and get your putt there potentially. But you got to get high enough up over there on your, what would that be, third fairway of this par six? Yeah, it's. Um... I'm just shaking my head. Basically, it's uh, I, I. There has been so many discussions about this hole, and I know it was described in the uh, latest update about the tournament that it's made like this to make it a little bit easier to get the eagle. And I was like, okay, <laughs> so it's going to be very interesting. I would uh, wouldn't be surprised if we do get tailwind on this hole. So we actually can use one of the power five balls. And still, even though we get that, it's going to be very, very tough to get to this green in two. Many of the people will maximum get to a wedge or like a rough iron ship close to the green, but still no safe eagle. And if we're having anything else than tailwind, I'm going to play it exactly as the black line, then to the white line to play it in the way that I've been playing this hole before. It's, um, but if we do get Tailwind for our first shot, then we're going to get Tailwind for a second shot. 
And then all of the sudden, it's going to be possible. And I say possible as to like 30% maybe, because it, you need to have the clubs for it. So uh, it's going to be something I'm really looking forward to to play on uh, like tomorrow when it's time to get cracking when it comes to uh, I'm going to play both the expert and master, especially masters with a high wind. It's going to be very interesting to see if they pull out some good tailwind here. Uh, otherwise, it's try to not put yourself into the bunker or into the rough for your first shot. That could be on the only way, basically, that will destroy this hole for you. Take a birdie, like 90... Ah, what will say, even though with Tailwind, I would say 98, 99 people that is going to... 99% of the people that are playing this tournament is going to make a birdie on this one. And of course, if you do manage to make an eagle, you will definitely have an edge on your opponent in that way uh, so uh, yeah then please share it with me i would be happy to hear that <laughs> so uh, so my friends uh, this was hole number nine we end up with the hardest part five in the game and it's going to be very interesting to play this tournament with all the new holes and i'm really big props to play demic uh, to uh, for making these new holes making it in a way that is difficult but still not impossible and that is why we play this game because it's always evolving and so so fun uh, i believe we had a question from the audience rj or am i am i wrong no you're not wrong uh and that's that's kind of cool um i hope we get more questions from you guys uh i'm not sure if you guys know but uh there's i have a good friend out there uh named james or he's also known as fun and james and uh, he asks Tommy, on the hole six, par five, will the turbo ball reach? Um, and I would say the first, and uh, thanks for the question, James, uh, first and foremost, appreciate that. Uh, and I would say not use a turbo ball whatsoever, actually. And uh, the reason for that is we can take the different type of winds here first. We can take headwind first, uh, first of all. Then we don't want to have a ball with power five and no wind resistance because then it will be very, very tough to just play in the wind. If we do have tailwind, uh, sorry, we can take uh, sidewind. If we do have sidewind, we don't want to have a crazy sidewind. Uh, we only are using like turbo balls or like uh, power five balls when we do have tailwind to be able to reach far and possibly get close to the green. So that, that only leaves us with tailwind. So, okay, what advantage could we get by using a turbo ball in, uh, in tailwind here? Could we reach close to the green? No, we won't, because we will probably bounce into the water if we try to reach over. Uh, will we be able to reach far on the left side or far on the right side, even if we're using a titan or a kingmaker? And the answer there is yes. Because that is the spot we're going for all day and every day on this hole. So that's why we're not going to use a turbo ball whatsoever. And going with a titan, with a kingmaker, because that is enough. Otherwise it's going to most likely put yourself in a situation where you get some crazy wind approaching to the green in two. Which is going to be even more difficult than going with a titan or a kingmaker. But to go back to your question, will the turbo ball reach... The answer is yes, but I don't suggest you to play with it because you will have an easier way to attempt a hole with another ball. But uh, James, thanks a lot for the question. Uh, and I hope that if you do have any questions, like now I'm talking to you as a general watcher or listener, that please pick up in the comment section below, uh, either here on the channel or on RJ's channel under this video. And we are happy to help out. And it, it, you may be found another way that we may not uh, thought about. Or you may be tried one of the ways that didn't work out at all because you may didn't have the clubs for it. We are here to help each other out. We are a, a, a big community in one of the biggest, game, like, biggest growing games in the world by the mobile, uh, mobile app uh, department. So... Just don't hold back, share with us, that would be absolutely amazing. And I will say like, uh, if you haven't done that already, check out RJ's channel, you can see that on the screen. 
and uh, I'm just going to ask you, RJ, are you going to stream the tournament, or how is the schedule looking? Um, I uh, I had computer issues, <laughs> so uh, I don't have a laptop at the moment. Um, however, that is going to be remedied for this tournament. I just don't think it's going to be remedied for the opening round, the the front nine. I always get those confused. I don't know if it's opening or qualifying, but... Yeah, the the first uh, the first batch is probably going to be streamed just using DU Recorder. So I'm going to have the black bars on the side of the screens. It's going to be hard to watch and chat, but I am going to stream it. Um, I'm hoping uh, Mondays. I always forget this. I always tell everyone, yeah, six o'clock or seven, and I forget. I have a doctor's appointment every Monday, so it'll <laughs> be a late stream Monday. Uh, Monday will just be practice. Tuesday we'll try to get in, and hopefully by the next round we'll have the laptop up and running. That sounds good. I will be there if it's not too late uh, due to those time zones that we do have. Uh, for us here on uh, uh, in Team Tommy, we're going to be live basically every day uh, during the week. We're going to have one day of break. I don't think I it will be Thursday or Friday because that is often when I'm getting as much as uh, as too tired to actually to stream a long run there. But we're going to play. Uh, practice for Masters uh, Monday and combined with Pro or Expert on um, on Tuesday we're going to play the other divisions that is left and, Ma and Masters uh, qualifying on Wednesday. Then we're going to see, then I haven't decided, but it's always 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So it's 8 o'clock Central European Time. So that is our standard schedule. So I hope I will see you there. So a long video, but a, a lot of uh, good knowledge here. If you do want to download the text, guys, or just have it up on your computer, you can find the link to the Imgur, uh, Imgur file, like Imgur link. I don't know, really. You can find the link, basically, in the description down below. Uh, so, uh, so yes, uh, I don't have more to say. Do you have anything else to say, RJ, or do you think we have covered the most parts? Uh, yeah, like you said, the video is running long because the courses are even longer. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So I will say this with a, uh, with a glass of juice in my hand. I will say thank you again. And uh, I will say thank you to you, RJ. And I will uh, see you guys during the tournament. And good luck. Get that gold. <laughs>